a travel guide for visiting Santa Cruz in California. I'm Chris, this is Dover, this is Yellow Productions. We do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. And in this video, we're gonna be telling you everything you need to know if you're planning a visit to this city. First, we'll start with some general information about Santa Cruz. We'll start with where is Santa Cruz located? Well, it's located if you look over here, right on the bay, this is the northern tip of Monterey Bay. Monterey, California, just down that way. We're also 32 miles south of San Jose, about 70 miles south of San Francisco. But it's over this kind of mountain range to get here, and so it keeps Santa Cruz kind of feeling like a little world of its own from the rest of Silicon Valley. But let's talk about major attractions. We'll start with the first one, then I'll come back for some tips. This is the number one attraction in Santa Cruz. This is the Santa Cruz Boardwalk. It's been rated one of the best, if not the best, oceanfront boardwalks in North America. It's like an amusement park right on the beach. This is a pretty cool place. It's been in lots of different movies. It's been open since 1907. If you're coming to the boardwalk though, make sure to check to make sure it's open. Pretty much every day in summer, just certain weekends in the winter. You know what, I really like the Santa Cruz boardwalk. Why? It's just so much fun. Little kids or big kids. I'm definitely in that big kid category. In addition to the rides, there's also food. There's like corn dogs and pizza. This place sells saltwater taffy. I don't know what it is about saltwater taffy and like boardwalks, but you gotta have that. But hey, look up here. Look, look, look up in the air. That's the Santa Cruz Giant Dipper, that wooden roller coaster. There they go down. And I love to hear the screams and that sound. So if you're truly an adventuresome rider, definitely check that out. These types of wooden roller coasters were hallmarks of beach boardwalks back in the day. Very few of them remain. So a little piece of history right here. I think the most creative of their games here is called Stinky Feet. You sit on what looks like a toilet and you use the squirt gun to squirt the stinky feet of that guy in the bathtub. When you're done exploring the Santa Cruz Boardwalk, another big attraction just over this way, it's the Santa Cruz Wharf. This, it's a really big pier and it's got restaurants on it, it's got shops on it, gift shops. You can actually take your car out there and park on that really big pier. Wharf. Santa Cruz, though, is probably most famous for being a beach town and for the beach. Now, we're here in the winter, so this might not look very appealing. There was a big storm and all this wood just washed up here. But if you come here in the summer, this is like a mob scene. Everybody from the Bay Area comes out here because the Bay Area, San Francisco, doesn't really have a lot of wide, sandy beaches. Certainly the one in Florida, the boardwalk is good, but there's actually a lot of beaches here. And what is Santa Cruz known for? Its nickname is called Surf City. Surf City because back in the 1800s, three Hawaiian princes came to Santa Cruz and introduced surfing to the U.S. mainland for the first time right here in Santa Cruz. I will point out though that if you are coming to Santa Cruz to surf, while the surf is considered good, it is not warm. This is definitely wetsuit water pretty much all year round. So bring your rubber to keep yourself warm. So another thing that Santa Cruz is known for in addition to being surf city, one of their mottos is keep Santa Cruz weird. They seem to have mottos and names like other cities, surf city like Huntington Beach, keep Santa Cruz weird, like keep Portland weird. But Santa Cruz is pretty weird. This is one of the hotels here, the Hotel Paradox. It's pretty weird. Is it an upscale boutique hotel or is it a renovated motel? I don't know, but this is where we stayed. We're here. If you want to see how weird this hotel is, you'll find a link in the description below or at the end of this video. But what else is weird about Santa Cruz? Well, there's tons of artists that live here. There's lots of weird art. I feel like the primary mode of transportation in Santa Cruz is by skateboard. <clears throat> the University of California, Santa Cruz, their mascot is the banana slug. That's right. And I picked up this newspaper in Santa Cruz. It's the Santa Cruz Comic News. That's pretty weird. They don't they don't need like writing for the news. You can just read comics for the news. I mean, it's weird, but it's kind of cool. A really interesting attraction Santa Cruz is to visit the mystery spot. Why? It's a gravitational vortex that makes everything lean just a little bit. 
Admission to the mystery spot is a bargain $8, but I will tell you, if you're coming here, book your tickets online, reserve ahead of time, because it gets really quite busy. It's about a 45 minute tour, and for eight bucks, how can you go wrong? They do charge $5 for parking, there's ample parking, and when you're done, they give you a free mystery spot bumper sticker. And they say, what should you do if you don't have a car to put it on? Well, there's plenty of other cars in the parking lot to put that bumper sticker on too. This one has a lot of them. So they end the tour by trying to explain the theories behind this mystery. Could it be aliens? Could it be magma? Could it be a gravitational vortex? You know what? The tour guide didn't know. What did we pay $8 for? Do you guys know? I'm curious. Do you think it's an optical illusion or some other force? Oh, by the way, here, let me, let me show you this way. There's also this hiking path that I'm on right here. And it's just on the other side of the hill from the mystery spot. You can do this for free when you're done. And it's just, it's neat to come here because it's like this cool redwood forest. And where I'm from, there aren't a lot of redwood forests. One pro tip if you're coming to the mystery spot, whatever the forces are that are here, cell phones do not work. So if you need Google Maps or things like that, make sure you get some offline maps. Don't expect to call an Uber from here because Uber can't hear you. This is probably a place to bring your own car. And that road to this parking lot, it's about a half mile dirt, really lousily paved road. You really won't want to be walking it and you probably want to leave your nicely polished Ferrari at home. For a really unique experience in Santa Cruz, ride the Roaring Camp and Big Trees Steam Train. This is pretty neat. I am on it right now. And why do you ride this train? Well, they've got two. They've got one that takes you around the Redwood Forest, and they've got a second one that'll take you down to the boardwalk in Santa Cruz. But I would recommend this train, the one that goes see the trees. It's an hour and a half train ride that costs a little over $30. You spend 10 minutes at the top. And this is the uh, steepest steam train in pressure, North America. Right? And they and tell you about the Redwood, the conductor here. right there. So hey, take a look at that conductor. State to about a thousand times its own volume. If you do decide to ride the steam train at Roaring Camp, I have two tips for you. The first one, reserve online. They do sell out. When we were here, two of the trains sold out. So if you're just showing up, well, you might not be able to ride a train for a while. My second tip for you is they have three types of cars, closed in cars cars, cars with little tent roofs, and one that are open air. Try to get in the open air car because you'll be able to see the canopy above the best. If for some reason you can't get in the open air car, well then try to sit in the corners of the car, the front or back, because you'll be able to take pictures the best from that vantage point. After your train ride, if you'd like to get a little bit more up close and personal with the redwood trees, well, just on the other side of the tracks from the main station is the entrance to the Henry Cowell Redwoods Park. You can go hiking over there. You have to pay parking if you park over there. So pay here once, and when you're done, just walk on over to the Redwoods Park. I'll see you there. So I mentioned the trees are big. Do you see this tree? This is the trunk of a 2,200 year old redwood. That is impressive. By the way, did I say Santa Cruz was weird? Come here. And did I say they have a lot of banana slugs? I mean, not just they have a lot of banana slugs around, but they even put them on the sign right there. Look at that, banana slug. So this state park with the redwoods, it's actually a rainforest. Not a tropical rainforest, but a temperate rainforest. Here in Santa Cruz, they get over 100 inches of rain per year. That's quite a bit. And each one of these trees drinks like 500 gallons per dray, drinks a lot of water from the root system, from the bark, and also from the actual branches and the leaves, from the fog that uh, is so prevalent here in the Monterey Bay. One of the best times to visit is right after it rained. It is a rainforest, and so you'll find lots of the streams flowing and a lot of the rainforest activity. But I will point out, it is cold here because it's not really sunny. Well, it's sunny right here, but it's not sunny right here in most of this. You'll want to bring some warm clothes because it's 10 to 20 degrees colder in the rainforest than it is outside in the sunny parking lot. Oh, and it's muddy too. So bring some shoes that you don't mind getting too yucky. Santa Cruz already feels like a world away from San Francisco or San Jose, but you come into the rainforest and it's like a whole nother world away. Actually, it feels kind of like falling into maybe a storybook. 
Okay, I know I showed you a fake slug earlier, but come in right here, look at that. The banana slug, look how big that banana slug is. That's why they call it a banana slug, because it is like nearly the size of banana. That's my hand right there. Nice to meet you, banana slug. Shall I pet him? <sighs> no, I'm not gonna do it. If you're looking for nightlife in Santa Cruz, well, a great neighborhood for that is Capitola by the Sea. There's all these bars and restaurants that basically look out here on Capitola Beach. This is also a great place to have those views of the whole Monterey Bay down to Monterey. And then if we swing over this way, Capitola has its own wharf, though this one's a little bit smaller than the Santa Cruz wharf. They still call it a wharf because there are cars driving on it, few restaurants down at the end. But what's really picturesque, if you love, Instagram and pictures is the uh, Venetian right here, the Capitola Venetian, this housing development. I love that each one looks like a different color, kind of looks like the houses in Murano, Italy, which is right, side, right outside Venice if you've ever been there. If you're looking for some place in Santa Cruz to do some interesting shopping, check out downtown Santa Cruz. It's here on Pacific Avenue and there's some interesting shops, in particular this one. It's called the Sock Shop and Shoe Company. This store started like 20 or 30 years ago. It started the sock craze that's taken the country by storm. Everybody thought they were crazy, but I said, right, Santa Cruz is all about keeping it weird. So these people are like, ah, Santa Cruz, people will totally buy some interesting socks. And if you want to know what their number one selling sock is, it's socks with two sea otters holding hands. Aww. If you're looking for coffee just down this way, there's a coffee shop called Verve. It's a Santa Cruz original coffee shop. And if you're looking for pizza by the slice, there's a pizza place on this street called Pizza My Heart. And I'm not saying the pizza is the best, but for $7, you can get a t-shirt and a slice of pizza. So that's a great souvenir to bring back because it says Pizza My Heart, Santa Cruz, and you'll fill up your billy your billy, you'll fill up your belly too. Well, so if your travels bring you to the San Francisco Bay Area, definitely consider a day trip or maybe even a few days to Santa Cruz to kind of feel a little bit more laid back, alternative, natural lifestyle. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video and you're in the Bay Area, maybe you want to take a day trip to Napa. Napa, it's just on the other side of San Francisco. You can check out this video right here. Maybe another one right here. Find the link subscription below. We won't say goodbye because we'll see you in the next video. See you.